All right, Panzer has been one of those games I've been obsessing over a little bit recently, so I wanted to get quite a bit deeper with it. So I thought I'd put together a couple of videos of me getting ready to play the game and then playing the game and seeing how I do, seeing how it all comes together. Um, this will not be instructional uh, as I'm just learning, but uh, it is something that uh, I wanted to give a go. So if you see me messing anything up or have recommendations, let me know in the comments and we'll see what happens. Uh, so the intent is, uh, you know, there's plenty of videos out there that do the early scenarios in the basic base game with the basic rules. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play with the advanced rules. Um, I'm going to try to sort out the optional rules that I want to use. Um, but I am going to start with the first scenario. So if you're familiar with uh, the game at all, or you own the game, uh, the first scenario is in the playbook, and it's vehicles only. And I believe if memory serves, yeah, there's there's 10 Soviet T-34s versus um, 11 German Panzer IV Gs, and they're fighting over a couple of um, uh, bridges and a Ford Hex uh, on the main base game map. And so I've got it pulled up here and pretty much set up. Um, I've already gone ahead and set up the, the units and their starting locations and the victory conditions as well. So we'll be ready to play. But I do want to spend a little bit of time thinking about optional rules. So let me pull up the option. Actually, take that back. Let me start with the, the advanced rules because I'm going to use them. I intend to use them all, but I want to make sure that they're all <laughs> familiar to me <laughs> or that I'm ready to use them. And some of them aren't going to apply because a lot of the uh, advanced rules use units in artillery that, that aren't in this scenario. Um, but jumping ahead to section five in the rule book, do, 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 where the advanced game starts. So you know, like the units aren't going to apply, squads and half squads aren't going to apply, crew weapons, mortars, aircraft, towed units, none of that's going to apply. Uh, Force grade in this particular scenario, I think they're both um, uh, seasoned. Uh, yeah, seasoned formation, so they're not really going to be any differences there. Um, recons, nope, stacking, not going to worry about that. No dual fire. Uh, I'm going to try to use bailing out. No, that's the intent. It's an advanced rule. Ammo limits for sure. Um, I think that's pretty much the main new stuff. We've got haul down, um, smoke. Yeah, the German units have smoke available to them, which I'll probably forget. Um, yeah, this it's the initiative. The um, ratings of the units aren't going to make any difference there. We'll definitely use um, the... Um, Number of commands available and command ranges, for sure. Don't need to worry about air. Don't need to worry about artillery. Um, rates of fire aren't going to apply because these are all normal rates of fire units. Uh, definitely uh, hit angle will be part of this. Ammo limits we talked about. No passengers. No infantry units, so there's no GP combat. General purpose combat, it'll all be AP. No close assaults. No hand-to-hand. -hand. No leg movement. No towed units, yeah. 
So it's going to be, I mean, it's going to be advanced rules, but there's going to be a whole lot that doesn't really apply in this scenario. Well, you know, hopefully if things go well with this, we'll get to those later in other scenarios. I know that there's a, another version of this scenario that does include uh, anti-tank guns, towed, uh, towed or, yeah, towed anti-tank guns and, and infantry units. All right, so that's the that's the advanced rules. But yeah, let's go to those let's go to those optional rules because um, I don't want to overwhelm myself with what's going on. But there are some that I think are really interesting. Um, morale is something I want to get to later, um, but not something I'm going to start off with. Hidden units, not something I'm going to start off with. Uh, radio, so Soviet early war communications, tank fright, uh, limited spotting. I actually find that one actually really kind of interesting. Um, but I think for a first scenario, I'm going to go without that. Um, I have played a live game with turrets, and I found it a little fiddly, especially at this time scale. Because what rule uh, turns are what five minutes, five to fifteen minutes. I mean, I'm actually kind of surprised that that's yeah. Complete turns representing approximately fifteen seconds to fifteen minutes. Yeah. Okay, a little bit a little bit broader than I expected, but uh, not going to use turrets. Um, so we'll skip that. Smoke dischargers. I don't think the the Germans have smoke. Got smoke. No, they've got dischargers. The four Gs have dischargers. I'm not sure what the difference is between regular smoke and smoke dischargers, though. I have to take that look. But uh, yeah, let's let's count that one. I'm going to write that one down. So 7.9, we're going to use. Um, there's no CE ammo type. 7.12, variable variable AP penetration. Day, yeah, definitely going to use that. Um, I think that's going to have an impact in the game. So what did I say? 7.9, 7.12. Definitely going to use that. Um, uh, fire priority sounds interesting. Maybe save that for later. Uh, no toad, no weapons to lose, no engineering, no engineers. Uh, no infantry smoke. Collateral damage. I may review it some other other time. Um, I'll write down weapons malfunction 7.25. Should be a rare occasion, but we'll check it out. Um, next two are for indirect fire. Not going to matter. Counter battery fire. Definitely going to use that when we get to artillery, but not now. Bogging down. Uh, most of the people that I see seem to use that, so I'm going to include it. I'm a little bit confused about it and what it represents. Maybe, maybe not what it represents, but why it's represented. I, I don't, I'm not a tank guy. I don't know too much about tank history or the way tanks work. Maybe on the, only on the most basic level. I'm just kind of surprised that tanks run the risk of running bogging down so often. That maybe it's not a lot off, and after all, just based on terrain, but just just the fact that it even needs to be modeled. But yeah, it's maybe especially for World War II, maybe it's a little bit more common than I uh, than I understand. And that's that's why I'm wondering about it. Uh, so yeah, we'll include bogging down. Uh, no mines in this scenario. Uh, no weight limitations. No dual driving. No amphibious. Fires, want to get to that one day. Uh, no terrain, time or del of day or weather conditions to worry about. Special units, that's re really ready. Uh, that's really for, I think, some of the uh, expansions, not the base game. Uh, staggered initiative? Yeah, I definitely would like to try that sometime, maybe with a bigger scenario. Um, with only 10 or 11 units per side. Uh, I don't want to get distracted by that right now. 
Also, uh, removing spot counters. That seems like an interesting rule, but uh, maybe get to that later with a little bit more experience under my belt. Um, bocage, no bocage in this scenario. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Command span. I don't know if I've looked at that one closely enough to understand it, what's going on. So if I don't understand it, I'm going to skip it. Leaders. Definitely want to use leaders sometime. Again, maybe not for the first scenario, but uh, I want to get to that someday. Yeah, there you go. That's all the optional rules. Uh, I, you know, a lot of a lot of them that I'm interested in, but I think the ones I just want to use. Um, one, two, three, four. So we ended up with smoke dischargers, variable AP penetration. Uh, 725 was weapons malfunction, pretty modest. And 729, bogging down. Yeah, interesting to list those out. I mean, it's not, you see the rule book and you see you know, 20 some pages of optional rules you maybe get a little bit overwhelmed but you know as it's clearly stated they're optional and you don't have to include all of them uh, but i got some good ones and i think you know, i think the advanced rules are gonna give us a lot to to work off of all right so we got that all set up let's go over to back to the scenario um and like i said i've got two sides and just for clarity we've got the victory point it's marked here on the map um fastball module is pretty good um there are a lot of options they actually have options for either the game counters which i'm showing here or these are alternative units unit markers which are kind of like more like miniatures you know rather than counters um i felt they were a little fiddly I'm not sure I'm going to use them in the long term or not, uh, but we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, I think we're pretty much ready to go. Um, you know, obviously I'm, I'm playing this solo, two-handed. Um, so, you know, I'm going to be pretty transparent about strategy and commands and things like that. No way around that. There are some solo rules that I've seen that some other people put videos up on. I haven't checked those out yet. I imagine I'll get to those one day, but you know, looking at the um, the unit cards, it really looks like like if I'm looking here at the the Panzer fours, you know, at medium range with armor piercing ammo, they've got a base penetration of 18. So if I compare that to the T34. You know, you're thinking that that 18 is going to penetrate most anywhere except for turret front and hull front from the front side or rear side. I guess it would be front side. Um, and again, that's basic. We're playing with variable penetration, uh, but I'm just trying to think about you know how close do I need to get. If, the, if I'm going to use that medium as kind of my baseline, that's going to be 12 hexes uh, before I really want to think about firing. Uh, I guess you could always force someone to bail out, but I just assume penetrate and blow somebody up and get some victory points for that. Uh, the, the same is true for the T-34s. You know, medium range, their base penetra penetration is 15. And that looks like that's going to be enough to get through most everything on the T, uh, excuse me, on the Panzer IV, except for a whole front, uh, which, you know, depending on where I'm shooting from, may be pretty, uh, pretty common. Um, the other differences between the units is in the movement rates. The, the T-34s are a little bit faster. Um, 
with their movement rates in the the Panzer IVs. So we'll see uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, uh, let me pull out sequence of play and see what we got going on here. All right, spotting phase. Spotting phase is first. Um, and if I remember correctly, most everybody is blocked off. Actually, there might be some spotting going on there. Um, yeah, these Germans to the south are going to be blocked off. We got forests, we got Soviets. Um, on the other side of them, kind of hidden behind um, a town. We've got hills here. Um, we've got some, yeah, that's gonna, gonna block by those forests. So really the only spotting chance I believe is from these two Germans, excuse me, those two German Panzer IVs and those T-34s, and that's a range of 20, clear to clear, clear to clear. So jump over to our terrain effects, spotting ranges. These are vehicles, no cover. We're starting off, so there's no move markers or spotting markers. So interestingly enough, that range is 20 and the spotting range in the clear is 20. So those units are spotting each other for whatever good that does them. Um, I mean, range of 20 is beyond extreme range for, uh, actually the, the uh, Panzer IV has a extreme range of 20. You know, certainly not the best shot. But um, anyway, we're going to, we'll consider them spotted, but uh, not sure that's going to come into play all that much this first turn. All right, uh, back to the sequence of play. Spotting phase is over. Command phase. We want to determine the available commands, uh, available commands for each side. And let me pull up the available commands chart. Uh, like I said, both of these sides are seasoned. Um, the, let's do the Germans first. They have 11 Panzer IVs. And 11 for seizing gets them six plus zero um, commands. So six total commands for them. And Six total commands right now for the Soviets with 10 units that are seasoned. Pretty straightforward. All right, place command step. Probably a lot of these are going to be move commands. Um, yeah. Let me think about, let me start over with the Soviets. Pull up some markers, see what's going on. Uh, markers, 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 data cards. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Where are the markers? Where are the markers? Where are the markers? There are the game pieces. Okay, markers. And we will use the no snap game markers. All right. So I think that what this guy's going to ultimately do is kind of stay behind this hill, sneak up to the north, and see if he can get uh, line of sight on the victory hex. Maybe do some climbing down the road. Um, these guys are going to kind of rush the road. That's two, three. Uh, this guy's going to try to get an altitude advantage on the hill ahead. And the stack is going to move into the village up ahead. Not 
Tell you what, he's got enough movement. He can actually do a short halt. Well, no, he doesn't have any. I think he's got to have a, a target to do that. So, because firing is combat phases first. Yeah, so he's going to have to move. So we'll just keep the move on him. And for the Germans, north to south, let's take a look at these guys. Um, yeah, a lot of moves. I think one stack is going to go into the woods. And um, another stack is going to go down the road. So that's two there. These guys are going to close in the open, open ground. And these guys are going to advance up the road. And I think technically with the command range of one hex, I could have used one command marker for them. But I went ahead and used two. I got enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, Germans use six, Soviets use five. So that'll be good. All right, that's the command phase. Let's go over and do some initiative. Uh, D100, each side, no modifiers for seasoned. So let's roll for the Germans first. And then the Soviets. 66, the Germans get to decide, and they will be the first player. And there is somewhere for me to mark that. Oh, yeah, I didn't do the turn track. All right, so first turn, Germans are the first player. All right, initiative phase, on to the combat phase. Nobody has any combat markers, no fire. So and there's no indirect fire in this scenario. Um, so no shooting, on to the movement phase. Normally we'd start with close assault, hand to hand, that doesn't happen. Got no, la no leg units. Um, movement and overrun combat. Second player goes first. All right, so let's do our Soviets. Um, we got a stack of two T-34s. We will reveal the move marker and they are gonna go open over land, five movement, one, two, Three, four, five. I'm gonna need to learn those. Need to learn those shortcuts. All right, down to the ones down here on the path. We'll reveal the marker. And on the path, I got a movement of eight. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oops. And I just cloned a guy. I don't want to do that. And they got to follow the road. All right, and the units behind them, they will follow, but they will stop over here a little bit shorter. Maybe a quick side note, this may not be the best strategy, but we're doing it, see what happens. Okay, down here, we're gonna reveal. Um, these T-34s can move over open land for five, one, two, three, Four, five, and the units down at the south, they go one, two, three, four. We'll stop there in the edge of the town, even though they can go further. All right, first player movement. 
Let's do the Germans. I need some terrain information. All right, um, that is, need to get familiar with my terrain. Light woods, light woods for tract is two. So I think they can turn at the beginning of the movement. But I'm thinking about that bog check rule. So let's we'll first reveal their marker. We go one, ah, another clone. One, two. Ah. <laughs> I keep cloning. Why do I keep cloning? It's not C, it's X. One, two, and they go three. Now in light woods, there is a bog check chance, but does that happen now? Let me look up that optional rule, 729. Bogging down. All right, bog column, terrain effects table, card A. Uh, positive or negative bog modifier. If, a move, if any vehicle has a move or short halt command while occupying one of the terrain listed types, it first checks for bogging down. A uh, vehicle entering a hex of the listed train does not check for bogging. However, if it attempts to exit the hex or move within the hex. All right, so what he wants to do is, is turn, change his facing. So I think to do that, I need to check for bogging. Yeah, I must check for bogging before exiting the hex or moving within the hex. Okay, so check now. Um, light woods, bogging is a one through 20. A G4 has a minus five, so 94 is 89 after the modifier, so it does not bog down and it completes its, oops, completes its turn that way. All right, and this stack of G4 just got move. Go one, two, three, four, five, six along the path. Um, all right, down to the south. We got. Um, a single 4G overland movement of four, one, two, three, four. Uh, stack down here, also four, one, two, three. I need to throw out my C button. Four. All right, those are done. And we'll reveal this one. These guys are along the road. One, two, three, four, five. Six. And his buddy will come with him. 
All right, I think that's it for the movement phase. And in the, excuse me, in the module, I can see how all of these are now marked with spot move dots. It's kind of handy. All right, um, sequence of play. Sequence of play, movement is done. Adjustment phase, we can do pivot steps. Everybody's pivoted, probably that needs to. Although, I wonder about this guy right here. Like if if he wanted to pivot, which he may want to, can he do that or can he not do that because of the path movement that he used? Hmm. Let's pull out the rule book. Let's look at pivot step, page 60. Because since we're not playing with turrets, I need to think about his forward facing. Uh, regardless of their commands, all dismounted leg and towed units in any order may change their facing to any hex side. Pivot in place. Pivot does not expend movement. It is not marked with a spot move counter. All right, so that seems to suggest that he is a available to do it. Um, let's maybe double check the, the movement rules. It's probably a basic rule. So movement costs turning. must start its move on a path or road hex and follow the route described by the path or road for its entire move, ending its move on a path or road. Uh, must maintain its facing along the route. May not adjust its facing to more advantageous angle during or even at the end of the move. In other words, it is always facing the road or path as it would enter the next hex. Hmm. I mean, he, he to me, he satisfied that requirement. He started, you know, uh, facing the road, he maintained his facing, he ended facing, and now we're in a completely different phase, the adjustment phase. So I am actually going to hope that's correct. And oops, these guys are going to pivot. And that should bring these Panzer IVs into their fire range for the next turn. All right, uh, just turret step. We're not using turrets. Full cover is for leg units, no suppression, no morale counter steps. Um, to change, uh, adjust, remove counter step. All right, so I think in the module there is a, let's see what this is. some way remove all command markers all right I think that's what we want all right so all the commands have gone and we are on to turn two 
All right, so let's stop there. Basically just set up and movement for turn one. That's a good start. And we'll get to the uh, turn two uh, next time I play, maybe tomorrow night. Um, anyway, thanks for watching this short video. Let me know if uh, you've got any comments, feedback, corrections. Uh, but yeah, we're underway. Feels good. Thanks for watching.